and welcome to Winchester News Online. I'm Aaron Summers. Our top stories today. No backing for local businesses, retailers forced to close up. It's horrible, it is a horrible thing. Budget spike in oil prices leaves Winchester drivers powerless. They've got me over a barrel because I'm just going to have to keep on paying for it. Chariots of desire, burning ambition for Olympic hopeful. It would be a dream come true. And in sport, was it the Bison or the Tigers who scored this late goal? Earlier this afternoon, the Chancellor of the Exchequer, George Osborne, announced the 2012 budget. Osborne aimed for a simpler tax system to identify Britain's strengths and to create a balanced economy. Here's our political editor, Lewis O'Brien. Stability comes first. These are the words of Conservative Chancellor George Osborne, who has just given his budget. The main focus point of the budget today is taxes. The Conservatives feel that this will benefit both the upper class and working class members of society. For the working class, it will see a tax allowance rise of, of £9,205 a year, which will benefit them and their families. Mr Osborne has also predicted that unemployment and inflation will fall in the next year and the budget deficit will fall from its peak in 2010 to 7.6%. From what has been one of the most transparent budgets in recent years, there have been no major surprises. Lewis O'Brien, Winchester News Online, Westminster. Straight after the budget statement, Lewis got the reaction from local MP Steve Bryan. Without a doubt, the Chancellor's made a political choice today. He's decided to take more of the poorest paid people I represent out of tanks altogether. That's something I've been campaigning on for years. Really, really pleased to see it happen. We've taken a personal lax tax allowance up to just over £9,200 now, so we're nearly at the magic 10000 that we said we'd get to by 2015. It's early in 2012 and we're there already, so really pleased to see that. I think that will really help some of the poorest paid people that I represent with money in their pocket, which they can hopefully go out and spend, and that will help the economy. So really, really pleased to see that, without doubt my highlight. I think that the rise in the basic state pension that has been announced by this government puts the 75 pence of the last government somewhat into the shade. I think this government has done a lot for pensioners. We've protected the benefits as we said we've done and we've risen the basic state pension by the most in its history. So, you know, I think we have a good record to tell on pensioners, but without doubt for me, highlight taking some of the poorest paid people in Winchester out of tax altogether. I'm now joined by Chris Pines, the Labour uh, councillor for St John and All Saints. Hello, Chris. Hi. Great news, isn't it? What is? Well, the budget, well, inflation has only survived by 0.1%, 5% drop in deficit since the Tory takeover. But not what they said it was going to be last year. So when I say what is uh, a good, I, I'm not totally convinced. I think the opportunities have been lost, actually, to, to help out uh, whole chunks of people. I mean, we listened to um, Steve Bryan earlier saying what he did um, and I'm not convinced about that so I did my own uh, survey last night okay. of um, what was going to happen and um, I got 60 responses from people which um, graphics included um, and what people were saying was that we don't feel we're all in it together okay. they feel very largely that people at the bottom of the pile are paying taxes and people at the top big companies the banks are, are not and my feeling is that that hasn't changed considerably today okay from what the chancellor has said brilliant well thank you very much for joining us chris today's budget sees fuel duty rise by the planned three pence george osborne has blamed this on high demand and the iranian situation but this won't help winchester motorists graham marshall has more Drivers of Winchester will take little relief from today's budget. George Osborne didn't raise fuel duty above the planned three pence price hike immediately, but instead it is confirmed to go up later this year. It will affect me in that obviously my um, expenses are going to have to go up, but I have to have petrol, which they probably know, so they've got me over a barrel because I'm just going to have to keep on paying for it really. The AA says that the current cost of filling up an average family car comes to just under £100 which is only set to increase as fuel duty rises. This means that motorists will continue to pay through the nose to get from A to B. It is painful every time you fill up the tank. On the other hand, this country is in debt, isn't it? It's got painfully in debt. 
The plan today may have been given the green light, but it will be a long time before we know the real world effects of today's rise. Graham Marshall, Winchester News Online. The recession is continuing to leave a mark on every English high street. Winchester in particular has seen five shops closed in the last three months and the manager of one of them says that the City Council is not offering enough help to small businesses. Our next report comes from Felicity Houston. Ringing up the till for the last time. Many shopkeepers in Winchester feel that this is the heartbreaking scene that they might have to face in the near future. This typical local gift shop is one of many businesses in the area which has been forced to shut its doors. It's horrible, it is a horrible thing um, and I don't know how other people deal with it. Um, I can't imagine not coming to work, not coming here and I don't know what I'm going to do when I come into Winchester and it's not Reflex, it's a different shop. It's a bit heartbreaking. The manager said yesterday that council bosses could have done more to stop her shop and others from going under. I must say I'm surprised at that because the council has gone to great lengths to ensure that the city of Winchester has ever increasing footfall. Businesses turn over all the time. All business failures are sad, but I don't think it's right to blame the city council. There's no indication that these big chains are in trouble, but as you can see, some of their smaller neighbours are continuing to struggle. Felicity Houston, Winchester News Online, Winchester. Dying for Life, a forum held by the University of Winchester and St. Swithin's School took place on Saturday. The event, which looked at the issues facing maternal health in a developing world, was hosted by ITV's Alistair Stewart, who, away from the news desk, is a passionate supporter of the campaign. You know, there's a 1 in 4,700 chance of a UK woman dying in childbirth. There is a 1 in 11 chance of it happening in Afghanistan, a 1 in 100 chance in South Africa. That's a moral duty. The Hobbit pub in Southampton has been saved from the threat of legal action brought upon its owners by the production company who owns the rights to the films. Now Stephen Fry and Sir Ian McKellen, who played the wizard Gandalf in the films, have offered to pay the annual $100 fee asked for by the Saul Sense Company. The two celebrities gave their support to the pub after online cam groups campaigned to save it. And now over to the sport, here's Rachel. Thank you, Aaron. Basingstoke Town were looking to build on their promising one-all draw with, the dro with Dover last Saturday with the win over Lowly Bromley. The Dragons were playing their fourth home game in a row. Lee Jarvis was at the Camro Stadium. With Bromley currently in a relegation dogfight, Basingstoke Town knew they would be in for a hard game on Saturday. And it was Basingstoke who started brighter. Delano Sam York missed time in this header. And it was the Dragons who continued to create the better chances. Tim Sill was denied by an acrobatic save from Joe Welch. The Dragons then had the chance to take the lead from the spot. Sam York brought down in the box. Daly stepped up, but Welsh guessed right. Basingstoke's frustration grew. Nathan Smart was denied by the excellent Welch, and then Sam York should have scored. But it didn't take long for Basingstoke to take the lead after the break. Matthew Warner's cross was headed home at the near post by Sam York. Basingstoke taking a deserving lead. But the Dragons' hard work was almost undone on 83 minutes. Substitute Anthony Thomas' dipping effort left Ashley Bays flat-footed. Albert Jarrett almost drew Bromley level with injury time. But Jason Bristow's side held on for the three points and are now nine points off the playoffs. Lee Jarvis, Winchester News Online. Winchester are edging closer to the Wessex Premier League title, but after being knocked out of the Hampshire Senior Cup on Wednesday, the citizens were looking for three more points in the league. Aaron Summers was at the game. Fair in town with the visitors at the Denplan City ground last Saturday. The mid-table side were hoping to stop Winchester's charge of 11 consecutive victories. The game came to life when the referee awarded a controversial penalty on the hour mark. The Ferro midfielder was adjudged to have been pushed by Charlie Smeaton. Sam Doswell made no mistake from 12 yards. Like their previous league outing, City had to dig deep to get a result. And despite frustration and missed chances, it was goalkeeping error from Douglas that led to City's equaliser. A dangerous cross from Smeaton was pounced on by Chris Mason after 75 minutes. It was Jamie White on 90 minutes last week. This time the roll of honour went to Tom Dunford. A well-placed shot passed the unsighted Douglas on 94 minutes. 
Results elsewhere and Winchester's victory means that City only needs seven more points to secure title glory. This is Aaron Summers for Winchester News Online. Now to ice hockey. The Basingstoke Bison went into their match on Saturday with bottom side Telford Tigers, looking to build on an impressive 6 3 away win over the Bracknell Bees last weekend. Henry Lewintit was at the Planet Ice Arena. It was the Battle of the Beasts on Saturday when the Basingstoke Bison played bottom of the table Telford Tigers. The Bison were hoping for a strong start, but it was the Tigers who had the first chance. Gerard Senko squeezed the puck between Matt Colclough's legs. Just 28 seconds later, Scott McKenzie doubled the visitors' lead. Player coach Steve Morrow called a timeout to try and fire up his team. But things went from bad to worse when Callum Bowley made it 3-0 at the end of the first period. The second period saw the Bison batter the Tigers' netminder with 16 shots, but he kept the home team at bay. In the third period, the Bison finally found a way past Declan Brown in the Tigers' goal. Joe Miller fired home from close range, giving the Bison some hope of a comeback. With minutes left in the game, the Bison subbed their keeper to try and find another goal. But this allowed Luke Brittle to score from inside his own half, closing out the game. Man of the match for the Tigers, Declan Ryan, made a total of 45 saves in the match, securing the win and the points for the Tigers. Henry Lewintip, Winchester News Online. That's all for the sport. Back to you, Aaron. Thanks, Rachel. And finally, with about 128 days to go until London 2012, the torch route was revealed earlier this week. The announcement has given one Winchester resident even more drive as she continues to try to earn her spot in Great Britain's marathon team. Daniel Mackerel has more. The 70-day route for the Olympic torch was announced this week including the journey of the flames through Winchester. It will be carried through the city on the 11th of July and will pass places such as Hyde Street, North Walls and the Upper High Street. It will also pass Winchester Cathedral, but while the city is looking forward to seeing the torch, one resident in particular is hoping to compete at the Games. Louise Damon will be taking part in the London Marathon in April, with hopes to impress and earn the final spot in the Team GB Marathon team. I think it would just be just be spine tingling stuff actually to run in front of home crowd. It would be a dream come true. Um, yeah, I'd be obviously really, really made up. Louise finished under the Olympic qualifying time in her debut appearance last year and is confident she can improve next month. With the Olympic Games not too far away, Louise will be looking to make a huge impact at the London Marathon. Daniel McCrell, Winchester News Online. And that's it for this week, but for more award-winning news, sport and features,